Hi everyone, I've got another Neville nugget for you. It's Agnes and today it's from Prayer, The Art of Believing by Neville Goddard. Now, Neville says, creation is finished. You call your creation into being by feeling the reality of the state you would call. Now, what's he talking about? Everything is already created. Okay, it's not really conscious creation that we're doing. I know we say that in law of attraction circles and and in terms of how things come to us and all of this, but it's not really conscious creation, it's conscious selection. It is all created. The wealth is there. The relationships are there. The joy is there. The wonderful, healthy body is there. Everything is there. You are selecting it. Okay, I did do a YouTube quite some time ago about conscious selection. I'll put it down in the description below because I explain that in more depth there, that process. So you're getting the feeling, the reality of the state. So if you, if you felt wealthy, would you be freaking out and worried and not sleeping about paying your bills? No, that's not the state. The state is freedom, relaxness, feeling I can buy whatever I want whenever I want, knowing that you can pay the bills easily and effortlessly. You don't actually think about money that much when you have money. You think about it when you're buying something or when you'd like to get something, but you haven't got that preoccupation that you have when you don't have money. And those of you that don't have money right now, you know what I'm talking about. It's this kind of anxiety feeling that you've got all the time, this little preoccupation that you've got going on all the time because you're trying to work out how to get out of it. So it's dropping all that preoccupation, going over the problem, going over how am I going to get more money. Those are the thoughts of someone that's in an unwealthy state. Okay, so to feel the state of wealth, you have to feel free. You have to feel at peace. You have to feel relaxed. You have to feel, oh, I can get whatever I want whenever I want. That's the state. So try and say to yourself, how would I feel if I could get whatever I want whenever I want? How would I feel if I could get that now? How would I feel if I could buy this now? How could I get into the state it's by asking yourself those kinds of questions. How would I feel if I had that now? Or if I knew I was on the brink of it, like I was going to get it today. <sighs> Aim for statements that give you that feeling, relief. Okay, so relief, relief, relief. Now, Neville, this is in the same chapter seven. I'm getting both these nuggets from chapter seven today. I imagine in the beginning of creation, no, <laughs> it's a big I. It's not I, it's imagination. Imagination is the beginning of creation. You imagine what you desire and then you believe it to be true. So every dream could be realized by those self-disciplined enough to believe it. So you're going from non-believing to believing. How? How do we go from non-believing to believing? You keep thinking about the wanted. You keep twisting yourself away from anxiety, from worry, from anxiousness, from thoughts that create those feelings in your tummy. Okay. You got to choose different thoughts up here. Then that goes down and creates different feelings. Okay. It's that's how it starts here. This is where all the problems are. This is where all the solutions can start as well. Okay, this is can be the greatest issue or the greatest remedy. It's up here. Okay, so imagination is the beginning of creation. So use your mind to imagine wanted things. Use your imagination before bed to think about what you want. Use your imagination to be in the event that you want to experience. For example, 
when I wanted to travel and I was trapped and didn't have enough money, I would imagine just being on a plane. I'd imagine hugging my relatives. I'd imagine walking down the main street of the village where I grew up in the south of France, where I was born. I imagined being surrounded by what I remembered as a child. I would surround myself with those images. Oh, it would make me feel free. It would make me feel happy. I remembered, you know, the details, the butcher that had the ribbon, you know, those ribbon, um, they're like a thing that hangs so the flies don't come in and out. I remember walking in there and I could see the colored ribbons. Now as a child, you're looking up and you see that and you remember it. But as an adult, I can use those images because I remember the childlike colors. So I use what the inner child remembers and access it. Walking into the butchers, seeing the big guy, well, he was big because I was a child, he was big to me. So remembering him in the butchers, remembering what he would say, remembering that he'd say hello to my grandmother or my auntie or whoever was with me at the time, taking me in there. So I'd go through, and this was a pleasant experience, reactivate, reinfecting myself with the whole thing that I remembered. So it became real. Okay. I'd imagine being in Sydney with my mom. I'd imagine being in London with my partner. I'd imagine my partner meeting me at the airport. You know, he would often hide and pretend he wasn't there to surprise me. And then he'd jump out from behind a pole and then we'd start laughing. And then it was the joy of that. Hey, I haven't seen you for ages and the fun, the connection, the love, the sheer adventure of it all so it was imagining these things and imagining you know the first hug with him imagining you know that he would be running because he'd be trying to get away from me at the airport and I'd be running trying to catch him with my suitcase it was like playing like two little kids so building this into the imaginal scene would make it fun for me as I did that it would ignite something in me, the feeling of adventure, the feeling of playfulness, the feeling of fun, okay? Seeing my mom, enjoying having a Vietnamese meal in Sydney where we always like to go and then we'd go to this other little cafe and have a sticky chai made with almond milk in this little hippie area of Sydney where it was very eco-friendly and you know, recycled, they did a lot of recycling. I remembered these details as I was doing the imaginal scene. So I'd go Sydney, London, south of France. And I would imagine these things. As I did that, it ignited the state. So as Neville says, you imagine what you desire, then you believe it to be true. I started to believe it to be true because I projected myself there. Now, it is about being there so strongly in imagination that you forget where you are physically in this moment. No matter what country I was in, it didn't matter because I was traveling around in my imagination. So since 2016, I've traveled four times a year to all these three places and that is my life. So it's good when you practice the state, the state was freedom because I felt really trapped, you see. So I wanted to give you that example because I had to transcend feeling trapped and having no money to being free and having enough to do this thing that I love and that I still love and that still brings me joy even when I talk about it and telling you. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed this little nugget. This is a great book. It's only about 50 pages for those of you that want to start. You haven't started on Neville. Good book. Now, I will put the Neville, Neville Nuggets series for those of you that haven't seen the other nuggets. And I will also put some other Neville YouTubes I've done down below. And also, there is a wonderful, wonderful woman on YouTube that I've been watching for quite a long time. Her channel is called Sass Mix. She does some fantastic YouTubes that are music with affirmations with Abraham Hicks and different things. So I'm going to share the link of that down below for you. Someone mentioned it to me in an email recently and I thought, oh my goodness, I've forgotten about that. That was so good. Haven't listened to her for a while, but I am re-listening at the moment and I want to share it with you. It's fantastic. So lots of love. Enjoy. 
and I'll see you in the next YouTube.